Hello, hello, and welcome to Rory's Brainworks, where we get creative and see if it works. Today, we're going to be talking about quick release rope bondage. When you want to put on something tight, but also want that extra bit of safety to get you out of it real quick if need be. Now, I'm not necessarily going to be showing you particular harnesses or ties that utilize it. I mean, one of them, yes. But instead, I'm going to try and show you how to do them which is actually a relatively simple practice. If I show you how to create a quick release, then you can create something beautiful on your own, in a safer environment, with less worry about having to cut your ropes. Speaking of which, let's talk about safe and consensual safety. Be sure to have some safety shears with you at all times. You can always get a new rope. You can't get a new life. And consensual. Me, Marie, and Crochet Roy are all consenting adults. Communication is key. Now before we quick release into this tutorial, we must first thank my sponsor, Knothead Nylon. Knothead Nylon is the destination for all your premium nylon rope bondage needs. Easy to clean, water resistant, up to 1100 pounds of weight load, and in a wide array of beautiful, vibrant colors, Knothead Nylon will slake your rope desires. At checkout, put in discount code Rory10 for 10% off. So, let us examine the mechanical nature, the physiology, if you will, of a quick release knot. One of the things you're going to notice right off the bat, there's going to be a lot of bows when it comes to quick release, which is going to be important. Essentially, a quick release knot is being able to pull one part of it and the knot comes undone. So really, how do you do that? Let's examine one of the more simpler knots in existence, essentially an overhand knot. So we'll take the rope, cross the bite behind the ends of the rope, and go through the hole. Simple. Surgeon's knot overhand knot, what have you. However, let's go backwards a little bit. I'm gonna extend my bite a little bit. So, our bite has gone behind our end, and instead of sticking the head through, think of it as sticking the butt through. So we're gonna stick the butt of the rope through it, where it's gonna be twerking its life away. And then, we'll just tighten it from there on out. Tighten that end of it. So you got the head, the bite of the rope poking out this way, and it's sticking its butt out right here. That's what you want to do. You want to tighten from the bottom of the knot, not from this part of the knot, because this part will just undo it. That's essentially it. The mechanics of it is that you have the butt right here, and it's going to just be able to slip right out of it. That's a quick release. Are they necessary all the time? No. Can it be incredibly helpful for a particularly predicament-focused scene, and also uh, working with a model who is unsure about whether or not they can mentally handle the ability of being roped up, of being bound. Someone who is new to it wants to test the waters. You can put in a quick release, that way they can get out very quickly. There are a lot of different ways to do it. You can see a lot of uh, futomomos that have a quick release option to it. And what I will be showing you, this quick release compression corset, is much the same to that. And hopefully with that small little tutorial I showed you earlier, you'll be able to adapt other knots to create quick releases inside them. It's really the last part of the knot that you're able to create a quick release inside. Hopefully now you can recognize how to do that. What he said. Now, Marie, you ready to get tied up? That's what I thought. Now, for this particular quick release compression corset, whew, what a mouthful, I will be utilizing three 30 foot ropes, two rose gold, and one knothead red. Uh, you can easily do it with two, but I think two is the minimum for it, technically. I mean, you can't actually do it with one, it's just weird. Any hoodily doodly. Let's get down to it. Start off by getting the bite of my knothead red. As all good things, it starts with a bite. <laughs> Bad joke, all right. Now I'm gonna take the bite, get a good length of rope, and pull it behind the neck. Actually, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more bite in the back. That is just rife with innuendo. Now I'm gonna have this loop coming down just about where the belly button is. Marie, you don't have a belly button. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, let me show you how I'm gonna tie this off in the back. Now you're gonna wanna have about eight to 10 inches of the bite of the rope free. We wanna make a large enough quick release. So this might just be a small repeat of the lesson I just taught you. So we're gonna take the bite of our rope, we're gonna wrap around and under this one, and then we're also gonna go under ourselves as well. Now you can already spot the hole that we would normally send the bite of the rope through and tighten. However, instead of sending the bite through, we're gonna send, we're gonna break it in half, and we're gonna send the butt through. So we have the butt going through this. That's it, twerks over here. The head over here, the bite of the rope, 
proud of its twerking. That's just how I see it, I'm so sorry. So then we're gonna tighten it up. This rope over here is actually just creating a slip. So the, this is technically a slip knot because this area over here will be adjustable. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the ends of the rope that did the knotting. We're gonna pull from this end and we're gonna pull from the bottom end of the twerk. We don't wanna go to the top end of the twerk because that'll just pull out this quick release. Wonderful. Tighten that up a bit more. Good, good. As you can see, that this part still slips through. However, once we get to the other part of the rig, it won't be able to do that anymore. But since you got a slip, that means we can adjust. So if you did lose or gain a bit of the rope in the front, you can now adjust that to it's exactly where you want it to be. The end of that loop at the belly button. And now we do have our quick release right here. So when we need to take it out, pull that part, we'll be good. Now let's add some rope to this. You're gonna have a bit of a dangle with this rope over here. That's okay, because that's homework rope. So I have my quick release right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my second rope. I'm gonna put it underneath, create a loop, girth hitch. Sweet, sweet girth hitch. How I love your girthiness. We'll tighten that down. It's gonna add some weight to it, so sometimes you'll see it uh, fall down a little bit. That's quite all right, because we're gonna be putting a lot of pressure on the front to where that will stop within the first uh, one to two go arounds. I want this girth hitch to be placed adjusted just where the bottom of the armpit is. The bottom of the axillary space. So we're gonna tighten it up down at that base right there as much as we can, and then we're gonna transfer over to the front. Now, if you do have absurdly heavy ropes and this continues to fall backwards, you can just have the model hold it in the front for the first few wrap arounds. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that second rope, we're gonna jam these together, and we're gonna wrap around it and we're gonna tighten it up pretty good, which is gonna make it off-center, but that's okay because we're gonna come around the other side and give it some counter pressure. So the model's not gonna feel any pressure yet, but they will. So it was important for this one to stay in communication with your partner. Make sure that your rope model is doing good. Rope models, same to you. You don't have to wait for a prompt. You can let them know. Marie always lets me know. So what I'm gonna do, so I wrapped around and underneath I'm gonna follow its fellow around the back. And when I'm crossing around the back, I'm just going to set the rope flat on the other ropes back there. I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. So I'm gonna transfer that rope over to this side and we're gonna do the same thing. We went over, around, under. Same thing on this side, over, around, under. Now we can start putting some of that counter tension on it. We can start pulling. Marie, how's that pressure? So we'll go around again. Make sure to keep your rope straight. Straight ropes are comfortable ropes. And like I said, when I'm going around the back, I'm just literally just going across the back and flattening the ropes that are back there. Same thing. We're gonna cross over and underneath. Apply some counter tension, back around. Marie, how's that feeling? Doing good, all right. Try and keep your other hand right here so they can tell where the tension of the rope is. Or you can have the uh, rope model hold on to that rope as well. Hold on to this one and this one. It gives them a sense of control, especially if they're uh, a little bit nervous about being a first time rope model and you're putting a quick release on. We'll keep that pattern going. Keep going around and around till we'll, uh, until we're nearly out of rope. So the ends of our original rope is gonna be a bit off, but uh, that happens normally anyway. When doing this finishing up knot on this part, you're gonna wanna have the model hold the tension in the front because if this gets loose, it may undo the rest of it. That counter tension is supremely important. I've done this many times, so I know how to hold the counter tension from back here. So have them holding those two red ropes in the front will be best with their thumb going up to the bottom of the second rope. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go beneath this line, over the top, beneath this line, straighten that out a bit, make these straight. And then we're gonna go beneath ourselves. There we go, look at that beautiful counter tension. <laughs> We're then gonna wrap in front of this one and then through this loop. Tighten that up, you're gonna have a little bit of extra. Perfectly fine. Now this knot can come undone, but we don't need to necessarily secure it fully because we're gonna be putting a girth hitch around both of these, which will then secure that in place. As I unravel this rope, the important thing to note is that everything in the back here, everything you're doing in the back does not need to have a quick release. We only needed one quick release and that was the knot up top. That's the most important one and the only one we need. You can knot up this back as much as you would please. I mean, try not to because it's gonna be a bit of a pain to undo. 
Just like the rope I'm trying to undo right now. Why are you being complicated, rope? Why you gotta go and make things so complicated? <laughs> rope, you have me singing Avril Lavigne. Wildly unacceptable. Ugh. All right, got it. I don't know why that was being difficult. <laughs> so I'm gonna take that third rope. I'm gonna send the bite over this and then girth hitch through. And then we're gonna tighten that down right there, which means this little uh, loose knottage will not come undone. I mean, it can, but it's like super hard and you have to be really intent on it. Perhaps if you had a, uh, an escape artist or a brat that knew how to get out of it, maybe they could do so, but ugh, probably not. So we're gonna start going this way, counter to this one up here, and we're gonna do the same thing that happened with these ropes right here, except now it's gonna be below the breast. Normally, unless that's something that your rope model enjoys, or you're going for a particular uh, photo shoot that had to cover up the nipples, you don't want to compress the breast, especially with a corset whose main focus is the compression. Speaking of which, Marie, how you feeling over there? Awesome. All right, let's start wrapping around the front. Now, the second reason we're coming from this side to start off this time is because, well, that's the next one in the pattern. We had the, we just finished on this side, so now we have to have that counter tension, and the next one up to bat is this side. Check that out. Will the ropes always be that gracious? No. No, they will not. So wrap in front, around, and behind, put in some tension, hold on to that tension, and send the ropes behind. Keep the ropes straight as well. And same thing, just compress the ropes in the back. Don't need to do anything overly fancy with that yet. Oh, we will though. Now we're on this side. I'm gonna wrap around and from underneath. We're just going to create some tension, pull on that until you got quasi straight over here. Come in, be more straight. There we go, got it. Simple adjustments. All right, keep going around. Back and forth, back and forth. Some say tedium, I say enjoyment. Nothing worth doing is done with haste. You have to take time to enjoy the process. Not only enjoying the tying up of someone, but the just the act of tying in general. If you're passionate about it, your rope model will see that passion. And if your rope model is also someone that you plan on being intimate with while the ropes are there, well, they see your passion. They see it and that makes them happy. Marie's got that petite waist. We weren't able to do so much over here. She's got a strong bust, but she's got that petite waist. Now for this last one, let me uh, get closer for you guys. What I'm gonna do, I can't just go around and then break it off right there. There's a chance that it will slip down and come off that way. So what I'm going to do is actually wrap around this one right here and then come back the other way and finish off the back. Now, I have a very low amount of rope coming back around this way. I could probably do the same thing we did up here. However, uh, I went one more extra loop, so I, I, I really can't. Uh, so if you want to, if you have the extra rope, you can do the little chain hitch we did up here. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this rope and I'm gonna utilize it to create a surgeon's knot. Tighten that up, pull down this way, wrap around with that third rope, and tighten. There we go. Is it the prettiest? No. Is it secure? Yes. <laughs> now you have this big length of red rope, and that is your homework rope. That is you getting to decide what you want to do with that. I'm just here to show you the basics of what's going on with this. I'm just here to show you the basics of what's going on with this quick release compression corset. Man, what a mouthful. All right, we got this thing going on. It's awesome. It's fun. Now, quick release. We have the quick release in the back right here, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quick release that knot. It comes undone. Now we can take it from this side and we can pull up. Might take a little bit of effort, but we can quick release that as well. Huzzah! Now it's off, done, simple, easy. It was there, compressing, and now it's gone. How exciting. Now Marie and I are also excited to see what you do with your homework rope. What am I gonna do with it? Well, I'm gonna try and create a design that also comes off with. I'm actually gonna utilize that rope for the back and forth compression, both up top and below, in order to encapsulate the two colors, red, rose gold, red. I'll show you what I mean right now. Now, did I create a huge amount of variation? No. It's really just adding the red on top and down below, which kind of helps encapsulate the colors. You have the red in the middle and at the ends and the rose gold filling it out in the middle. It's like an Oreo. Tasty, compressive Oreo. I don't know what I'm talking about. 
going through the loop, the, the red will end it and it actually has another uh, quick release, release right there. So you actually need to undo that before you pull the quick release up top. This is what we got going on in the back. Just really uh, simple girth hitches, X friction knots, trying to hide the knottage beneath the ropes as much as possible. That way it doesn't take away from the aesthetic factors of it. <laughs> it's so satisfying. Well, hey, I hope you had as much fun learning from those tutorials as I did teaching them to you. Well, Marie got really excited about that quick release compression corset and just decided to wander off outside. I think some of the words that were involved when she was walking out were quick release and full Monty. Hmm. Oh, she's definitely going to expose herself to people again. As per usual. Anyway, I'd be remiss if I did not bring up my other sponsors for today. The lovely people over at Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash Rory's Brainworks, just like this YouTube channel. They are my rope vanguard, my colonizers of dreams. And without them, these ropey endeavors would be way harder to accomplish. Thank you for spending your time with me. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this madness, and comment down below what kind of rope bondage things you would like us to teach you. As always, I'm Rory. This is our brain. I'm fairly certain it works. Be safe and go create some art.